Wearing a tracksuit to a mixer is just lame. Man, that's a no-go. Why don't you just head home? I was invited to drinks by a former middle school classmate, having been told it was just a casual get-together with old classmates, so I showed up in my casual tracksuit. However, upon arrival, I realized it wasn't just a casual drinking session, but a mixer. The women were already there, and there was no turning back. Ah, did I make you mad? Are you upset? It was just a joke. Don't take it seriously. Ha <laughs> ha. When I tried to respond angrily, the organizer, my former classmate, would just brush it off as a joke. The vibe was kind of awkward, but I figured it couldn't be helped and was heading to the bar. That's when one of the women who came whispered something in my ear. My name is Jason. I'm just an average guy, but there's one thing about me that might be a bit unusual. I have an undying love for tracksuits. Lately, I've seen a lot of functional clothing, but I always end up thinking, isn't a tracksuit good enough? It's comfortable without any unnecessary tightness, has the right amount of stretch, it's easy to clean and dries fast, and the designs are cool. I could go on and on about the benefits, I just love tracksuits that much. I have them divided into ones for sports and ones for lounging around at home, and my closet is practically filled with them. My preference for wearing tracksuits probably stems from my love of sports. In the elementary school, I was juggling multiple sports clubs like basketball, soccer, and tennis. Once I got to the middle school, I had to focus on my studies and choose just one sport. After much deliberation, I joined the basketball team, my favorite, and dedicated myself to it for three years. Even now as an adult, I continue to be active, sometimes playing basketball with friends on weekend. On days when I can't play basketball, I never skip my jogging routine. Even when I'm tired or busy with work, as long as it's feasible, I go for a run. It's become a daily habit, and I feel restless when I can't do it. It's probably a testament to how much fulfillment I find in physical activity. Or maybe it's because I can't wear my sports tracksuits. No, probably not. One day while jogging, I suddenly remembered something from my middle school days. It was an unforgettable memory from the last regional tournament in middle school. Please, let this work. The heat of summer and the fervor of the audience. Surrounded by two kinds of heat at the venue, I prayed out loud. We were losing by a narrow margin in the final minute of the game. As I took the shot, I remember the moment until the ball went in or missed felt like it was in slow motion. Yes, it went in. After what felt like an eternity, the ball finally passed through the hoop. We not only caught up but took the lead. Jason, Jason, I was celebrating with my teammates, fully convinced we had secured a comeback victory. But then, as if struck by divine punishment for our complacency, the unthinkable happened. No way, you've got to be kidding. In the final moments, our opponents landed a three-pointer. Despite our desperate attempts to take the lead back, we were defeated, our resistance in vain. In the end, our complacency led to a bitter loss in a turnaround. Since then, I've lived by the motto, never let your guard down. In basketball, as in everything, you never know what might happen until the very end. Memories of the game brought back images of my teammates sobbing uncontrollably. Now, it's just a nostalgic memory, but back then, it felt like the world had ended. Thinking back, I heard the guy who cried the most is now running a company. I'll be donned, that guy, huh, I think to myself, but I guess we're all in the same boat. Today was a day off. I planned to go jogging, but what else should I do? Basketball was out since the regular crew couldn't make it. Besides, the weather was unfortunately not suitable for outdoor sports. A bummer for a day off, but maybe it's a chance to do something different. With that in mind, after jogging, I changed into my loungewear tracksuit and stayed indoors. I even cleaned parts of the house I usually don't bother with. 
For lunch, I whipped up something from leftovers in the fridge. As the evening rolled around and I got bored, I watched a movie I'd been meaning to see on a streaming service. I had some unopened snacks, so I enjoyed them as I watched. That was a thought-provoking story. I mused to myself as the credits rolled, when suddenly my phone on the desk started buzzing. It was a call. Who could it be? Hopefully not work-related. I fought with a sense of dread, picking up the phone. The screen showed the name Tyler. Tyler was a middle school classmate, someone I rarely kept in touch with. Wondering what it could be about, I muted the TV and answered the call. Hello. Hey, long time no see, Jason. Came Tyler's voice from the other end of the phone, unchanged since those days. His tone was the same as back then, bringing back vivid memories of the old days. Long time indeed. What's up? Out of the blue. You know, you missed the reunion a while back, right? Everyone was bummed they didn't get to see you, he said. About half a year ago, I got word of the reunion from another former classmate. I had wanted to go, but unfortunately, work got in the way. As a sort of makeup for that, a few of us from middle school are getting together for drinks tonight. You want to come? Saying that, Tyler told me about the other members who would be joining. Hearing some familiar names, it definitely seemed like a reunion rematch was in the cards. Got it, I'll be there. Great. I'll send you the location link in a message. We'll meet there. Sure thing. See you later. I hung up and started getting ready to go out. I heard it was just a casual get-together with classmates, so I didn't bother dressing up and left in my casual tracksuit. The weather was still on and off rain, with even darker clouds visible in the distance. Looks like we're in for a heavy downpour. I muttered slipping a foldable umbrella into my bag and heading out. Walking from a certain station to the designated bar, I spotted a group dressed to the nines. Among them was Tyler, the classmate who had contacted me. He was with a group of women. As I approached, still puzzled, Tyler burst into laughter upon seeing me. Why are you wearing a tracksuit, man? He chuckled. That's when I finally realized this gathering was a mixer. To get me to come, knowing I'd refuse if it was a mixer, he lied and said it was just a casual drinking party with classmates. That's probably it. You still all brawn and no brain, Tyler said, laughing and mocking me. The other classmates laughed along with him, which felt pretty bad. Whatever, let's go, big guy. Tyler, acting as the organizer and group leader, said and led the way to the bar. Following him in order were the classmates, the women, and then me. Big guy, huh? That's a nostalgic nickname. I murmured to myself so no one could hear. Big guy was my nickname in middle school. I was big and muscular, and also in the basketball team. I got the nickname because my situation resembled a character in a certain basketball cartoon. Back then, it felt like most people called me that out of respect, but now Tyler seemed to use it mockingly. I'm not the same as I used to be. I don't just do sports all the time. I don't think I'm just a muscle head. But Tyler and the others don't seem to see it that way. Should I snap back or just laugh it off? While I was thinking, Tyler, walking in front, said loudly, Wearing a tracksuit to a mixer is just lame, man, that's a no-go, why don't you just head home? He had this annoying smirk on his face. That reminded me. He has always been the type to mock and laugh at others when he got carried away. I'm not good at showing emotions and don't get angry much, but I'm especially bad with such people. They mistake my silence for acceptance. Sigh. Faced with Tyler's behavior, I let out a sigh. Does he think I won't get in green no matter what he says? Look, man. Unable to stay silent any longer, I opened my mouth to say something. But Tyler quickly interrupted me with his usual assertiveness. 
Ah, oh, did I make you mad? Are you upset? It was just a joke. Don't take it seriously. Ha ha. That's his usual tactic. Say something to provoke anger. Then, when someone is about to get mad, escape by claiming it was just a joke. This unbeatable phrase is tricky because if you get angry at Tyler's laughing, you're seen as the guy who can't take a joke to everyone else. So, I had to stay calm. I didn't know it was a mixer. Oh, really? Tyler just feigned ignorance when confronted. It was frustrating, but to avoid making more of a scene, I had no choice but to go along with his pace. After all, there were women around. The mixer partners were all beauties. They were all flight attendants from the same airline. On the way to our seats in the bar, one of them whispered to me, Captain, why are you hiding it? Her name was Grace, a female colleague from the same company. The other women, whom I also knew, kept glancing over. I'm sorry for making things awkward. I'll explain when I get a chance. Okay. Grace seemed unconvinced but didn't press any further. Shortly after the mixer started, a man arrived late. I had wondered why there was one man short, but now it made sense. Tyler hadn't explained this either. Good evening. Sorry I'm late. He said in a stylish outfit, making him seem like a completely different entity compared to me in my tracksuit. I recognized him. No, it was more than that. Isn't that David? Hey, long time no see, Jason. He was David. A classmate and teammate from the basketball club. He was the one who cried the most after we lost our last tournament. His impressive attire made sense since he runs an apparel company. Sorry, can I get a beer? David sat next to me, smiling as he ordered a beer from the waiter. He introduced himself to the women and smoothly started to blend into the conversation. Unlike Tyler, he didn't mock my tracksuit and seemed to enjoy the conversation. A little while after he joined, he was chatting happily when Tyler abruptly interrupted him. I remembered, this guy used to cry a lot in middle school. Tyler's words were meant as a taunt. David responded with a froed brow, and it was clear he was remembering, just like I had earlier, that Tyler was always this kind of guy. He used to bawl his eyes out over losing a club match, and remember when he cried because a cicada landed on his shoulder. Ha ha! Tyler pointed at David, trying to turn him into the butt of the joke. But Tyler was the only one laughing. Cut it out, Tyler. It's not funny at all. Ha ha! Just kidding, man, you're still so serious. Now I became the target for defending David. Right, you've always been like that, no sense of humor. Can't even crack a joke, always just a jock, and you even failed your first choice high school entrance exam. Tyler went on with his insults about me. Right, guys. He sought agreement from the other classmates, but they seemed aware of the situation. Seriously, it's funny that you came to a mixer in a tracksuit. Hey, Tyler, just stop, will you? Yeah, look around, man. Perhaps realizing it only after being told off by those he thought were his lackeys, Tyler stopped my story midway. Indeed, all the women were looking at him with cold, unamused expressions. In that awkward atmosphere, Grace spoke up. So, Tyler... You can only speak ill of others, huh? Is that all you have to talk about? She said it with a gentle smile, but her choice of words seemed tinged with subtle anger. Upon hearing this, Tyler's face stiffened. You're not funny, and you're the worst as a person. You're ruining the mood of the party, making it no fun at all. You told Jason to go home earlier, but you should be the one to leave. The other women agreed with Grace. Tyler, Seemingly not expecting this, turned red and shook with contained anger. A joke is supposed to be fun, but yours are just malicious and uncomfortable. It shows your true character. Grace didn't hold back. And the other women nodded in support. None of the men tried to stop her.
they must have been feeling the same dissatisfaction towards Tyler. You bastard. Finally speaking up, Tyler showed no signs of apology or remorse. Instead, he exploded in anger. Don't get cocky just because you're pretty. He yelled as he walked towards the women, trying to grab Grace. Whoa, that's enough. Unable to just stand by, I stepped between Tyler and Grace. I grabbed Tyler's arm, glaring at him to silently convey stop it. I'm still somewhat fit, and I've always been bigger than him. Stopping him was no trouble at all. Captain, thank you, Grace said loudly, making sure others could hear. The word captain caused a stir among the classmates. Captain, yeah, she did call Jason captain, didn't she? I had thought I would mention my job when the time was right, but I never expected it to come out like this. Releasing Tyler, who looked dazed, I turned to everyone. Actually, I'm a pilot. At my revelation, my classmates expressed their surprise. Grace then added, We actually work for the same company. I never thought we'd be invited to the same drinking party. While we laughed at the strange coincidence, Tyler slumped to the ground. In middle school, I was too focused on club activities and my grades weren't great. In high school, I worked hard to balance basketball and studies. All that effort paid off when I got into an aviation college. I only mentioned my dream once in middle school. I think it was during a break when I was talking about the future with friends. I want to be a pilot someday, to fly freely in the sky. While we were having a good time, Tyler barged in and threw a wet blanket on it. Come on, a pilot, like you could ever become one, haha. <laughs> The dream of being a pilot was even older than my basketball days. I kept it alive despite Tyler and his gang mocking it. After that, I never spoke of this dream again. But I never gave up. I secretly continued to work hard, and here I am, a pilot. Tyler, slumped on the ground, glared at me bitterly. To him, I expressed my dissatisfaction. You haven't changed since middle school, Tyler. You only bring others down to show yourself, but that doesn't mean you're getting any higher. How about realizing that? You're an adult now, aren't you? He continued to glare. Why can't you understand that such tactics don't work anymore? He bit his lip in frustration. Then David added, Sure, I was a crybaby, but that was a long time ago. Tyler had never asked about the current Jason or current David. Even after more than 10 years since middle school, he clung to the past. Now, I run my own company, sorry to say, but I think I'm living a much better life than you. David stood up, turning towards Tyler as if showing off his appearance. Your watch and shoes are mass-produced, and the sewing on your clothes is sloppy, cheap stuff, obviously. I'm not saying wearing cheap things is bad, but at least you're not in a position to mock Jason's tracksuit, right? Embarrassed by the pointing out, Tyler covered his watch with his hand and stood up. His face was again red, a mix of shame and anger. Shut up, I won't invite any of you ever again. With that, Tyler suddenly ran out of the bar. After he left, the atmosphere of the drinking party became much more pleasant. The classmates who had been close to Tyler seemed to be reflecting, heads down. Sorry for going along and laughing with him, should have stopped him. Excuse sounds weak, but being around old friends, I guess I got carried away, like reverting to childhood. Those classmates, as an apology, even offered to pay the whole bill. The gathering no longer felt like a mixer, just a casual drinking party. Especially for me since everyone else was a colleague. The idea of a mixer now seemed embarrassingly out of place. Anything more might make things awkward at work. Suddenly, Grace looked at David as if remembering something and spoke. By the way, David, you often fly on our company's planes, don't you? Yeah, I travel overseas a lot for work, so I use them frequently. David replied with a smile. Wait a minute, 
I haven't heard about this. David and I had kept in touch occasionally, and he knew which airline I worked for as a pilot. Hey David, is that true? Yeah, it's true. I didn't say it, but I've been on flights you piloted. Seriously? Wow, I was shocked, not knowing David had been on my flights. Every time the captain greeted, I looked forward to seeing if it was you. He said, laughing. Meanwhile, I couldn't laugh, embarrassed at being observed at work without knowing. Then, David started talking about his apparel brand. The women were very interested in his story. David of today bore no resemblance to the boy who cried after losing a game. He had grown into a confident and respectable man. As the party wrapped up, David and I chatted for a bit. Great seeing you again, Jason. Definitely, it's best to talk face to face. Though we messaged each other, meeting in person was different. I had fun today, let's drink again sometime, David. I invited him, but he looked downcast. David, curious, I leaned in as he quietly began to speak. I've been meaning to tell you, I'm moving to Paris for work. Is that so? He was leaving the US in just a week. I'm glad I could see you one last time. He said, extending his hand. Accepting the handshake felt like saying goodbye. For a moment, I thought that. But either way, the reality of parting was inevitable, so I extended my hand too. Well, it's not like we'll never meet again. Right, David, we have messages, and we can call if we want. We shook hands firmly, smiling as we parted ways. A week later, as a captain, I was on a flight to Paris. The weather was clear, and the flight was smooth. Just before landing, I started the in-flight announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, our aircraft will soon be entering its descent. Please prepare for landing by returning your seat backs to their original position, stowing your tray tables, and securing your footrests. I then added instructions about stowing luggage and announced that the cabin crew would be making a final check. After the usual greetings, I continued. This is a personal message. I had rehearsed it many times in my mind, but the actual moment still made me nervous. A dear friend of mine is on this flight, embarking on a new journey to a new land, ready to spread his wings on the global stage. It is an honor to be part of this significant step in his life. He is a kind person, one who gets angry, cries, and laughs for others. As a friend, it's saddening to part ways with him. However, our airline connects the world, and together with other airlines, it brings the world closer. To all our passengers, we look forward to welcoming you aboard again. After saying everything I wanted, I turned off the microphone. Taking a deep breath, my co-pilot Kevin gave me a small round of applause. Great speech, Jason. Thanks, I might get in trouble for doing something like this, but it felt right. We shared a laugh. Right about now, Grace must be giving David a certain package. I had asked her in advance to deliver it, a modest gift for him as he embarks on his journey to New Horizons. The package contained three things. A group photo taken after our last basketball game in middle school, a letter, and a handkerchief for any tears. I had told her to ask him to open it after reaching his destination, but I wondered if he would wait. Ah, those were the days. I fought, holding the same photo in my hand. I remember David as the one who cried a lot, but looking at the photo again, I realized we all had red eyes. I was no exception. Jay, that's how it was. Kevin watched silently as I indulged in memories. It was all because of you, wasn't it? After narrowly losing the game, we returned to the locker room, feeling frustrated and stunned. Even after hearing the coach's words, it still didn't feel like reality. But just before taking the photo, things changed. One of us started crying loudly. David back then. We were all holding back tears, but his crying broke the dam. 
He had voiced our collective emotions. It was a relief for someone like me, who's not good at expressing feelings. I think it was because we could cry openly there that we were able to move forward. Although I didn't pass the first choice public high school that Tyler mentioned, now that my dream has come true, the distinction between public and private schools seems trivial. Later, after landing, I bumped into David at the airport. It was a bit awkward since the announcement was meant as a farewell. Jason, you really surprised me with that announcement. His expression was a mix of a laugh and a cry. Good, you heard it. I'm glad. Thanks, Jason. Like you said, the world is close when you're on a plane, and the sky connects us, so I'm not alone. He smiled broadly. Suddenly, he began rummaging in his bag. By the way, Grace gave me a package from you earlier. Can I open it? No, no, don't open it here. Wait until you're at your hotel or new place. Startled by my insistence, he stopped and said, Okay, okay. Reading a letter in front of me would be too embarrassing. Next time I come back, I'll fly with you again. Take care of me then. Sure thing. We waved our hands overly large and finally parted ways for Ray all. David's face showed no signs of doubt or anxiety as he walked away. Soon after, his brand began gaining more recognition. According to the message I received, he will soon participate in the Paris Fashion Week. Hearing about the remarkable progress of my close friend made me as happy as if it were my own achievement. As a result, his brand is expanding its stores in the U.S., especially popular among young women. In our company, his brand is a constant topic of conversation. Not just among Grace and the members who attended that drinking party, but also among senior and new flight attendants. One day after work, I received a message from David. It's your birthday, right? Here's a return gift for you. Take it, it said. When I opened the delivered cardboard box, inside were a tracksuit top and bottom. And they even had his brand logo. Really, two sets, one for lounging and one for exercise. I gratefully accepted them and hung them on a hanger, displayed on my wall. When I mentioned it to Grace and the others, they were envious and amazed. As far as I know, his brand hasn't released tracksuits yet. So, the birthday present I received was specially made just for me. This fact was a major reason for the envy among the ladies. By the way, I haven't worn the tracksuits even once, despite receiving them months ago. I'd hate to get them dirty as lounge wear or tear them during exercise. It's too precious to wear. When I told this to David, he scolded me, saying, Clothes are meant to be worn. I apologized but still haven't worn them yet. I wonder when and on what occasion I should wear these special tracksuits. This has become my biggest dilemma lately. Passengers on airplanes come with various emotions. Some bored with joy, others with sadness. Some with excitement, others with reluctance. For work, tourism, relocation. Not just for our airline, passengers have diverse feelings and purposes. My job is to safely deliver all these different passengers to their destinations. With the tension of carrying my own dreams in the lives of the passengers, I fly through the skies today without belittling anyone. I'll continue to strive, holding pride in myself, not just relatively, but absolutely. Gazing up at the vast sky, that's the promise I make to myself 